LiDAR viewer is a viewer for, well, LiDAR data. Specifically, it's a viewer for seamless exploration of, uh, of very large LiDAR scans. Now, this LiDAR scan here, which is an aerial scan of San Francisco, obviously, um, is not particularly large, I should admit. Uh, it's about 830 million points, clocks in at about 42 gigabytes on disk. Um, but the reason why I'm showing it off here is because I downloaded it recently and it's just, uh, it's very beautiful. I like San Francisco. So we can take a little tour here. Let me go to 1 to 10,000 scale so we can see a little bit more what's going on. Um, this here is the Bay Bridge. I don't have data over here. So then there along the Bay Shore is the Embarcadero. Um, this here is Market Street. Up here, Financial District with all the skyscrapers. Um, as we go further down Market Street, here is South of Market. Uh, this here is Yerba Buena Gardens. It's a very nice place if you really zoom in here. You can see that. Um, and uh, the, the nice thing about uh, aerial LiDAR scans like this one, and I should explain, aerial means it's uh, scanned from uh, from an airplane flying at about, I don't know, about a thousand meters or so. Oh, that's City Hall. Uh, is that you get very large spatial coverage. So we have many, many square kilometers here at very high resolution. In this case, about 10 points per square meter. You can see that. But the downside of aerial LiDAR is that because it is scanned from above, uh, the moment you start flipping the data over and looking at it from the side, like here City Hall, you notice that there are no walls. Um, and once you think about it, it's clear. Uh, the scanner scans from above. It simply cannot see the walls. So you have these ghostly roofs kind of floating in the air. And that is, for many scientific applications, is not really a big problem because there you don't care about the buildings. But if you just want to go down the street level and have it look very realistic, then this is a problem. Um, and there are other scanning methods uh, which give us the walls, but then their drawback is they don't give us this coverage. So to really see what this looks like, let's go back down to the uh, financial area. This is the, whoa, I just flew all the way across there. Hang on. Uh, this is the Transamerica Pyramid. And that one actually looks pretty good. Um, because it doesn't have vertical walls, it's a pyramid, duh. Uh, but if you look at the building next door here, which uh, happens to be the San Francisco Financial District Hilton, then you can see the roof is very nicely resolved. You can see the swimming pool, the stairs leading up to it. Well, I don't know, it doesn't actually look that big. Let's me, let me measure that. Uh, so that's about, oh, actually, that's about a quarter size of a real swimming pool. So let's call it a bathtub. But what you see is that the roof is nicely resolved, but the walls are just extremely ghostly. Um, and that is really. Uh, if we go and zoom out a little bit more and look at the entire uh, downtown area, the whole thing has a rather skeletal, almost post-apocalyptic look. And that's just the price you have to pay for getting this large coverage uh, from uh, low-flying airplanes. And, oh, I want to zoom into this building here. It always reminds me, it looks like somebody ran the Titanic into the ground here. It's a very funny-looking building. Um, so there are other methods of collecting more data. But then the problem is that you get um, that you have a much harder time collecting this much data. Oh, there's a swimming pool here. Very funny, San Francisco. Oh, I should mention, looking at this, um, where do the color colors come from? Uh, LiDAR data by nature um, are black and white, or I should say grayscale, monochromatic. Um, so the colors here are the result of mapping high-resolution aerial photography. Um, onto the LiDAR data. So I downloaded uh, about 180, uh, 25 megapixel aerial photographs at about 0 0.3 meter resolution and mapped them on there. Unfortunately, uh, both the LiDAR data and the images were georeferenced, so the mapping was fully automatic. But there were some interesting artifacts. If you go back to the Embarcadero main building here and the tower, you can see that. Um, the, the colors for things that are close to the ground, like these stairs here or this wall here, um, or this uh, fountain slash statue here, they match very well, but the higher up you go, the more mismatches they are. So the tower itself, you can see, is mapped here onto the street. And that's just because these photographs are processed so that they map onto the ground after you've taken all the buildings and trees away, which of course we don't do in LiDAR data, and so that's a problem. The higher up you go, the more mismatches you get. Uh, things like this look really nice. Uh, tall buildings are often a problem. Uh, here, by the way, we have some interesting piece of public art right there. Um, and there's another source of artifacts that I want to mention because it's somewhat funny. Uh, where is it? Let's see. There is a, oh yeah, right here. Um, there was a big ship that was there moored at the pier when the aerial photograph was taken. And then when the LiDAR scan was taken, which was about, I don't know, one, maybe even two years later, the ship wasn't there. So the colors from the ship are mapped directly onto the water surface. 
and the opposite of that effect is if you go back over here where is it oh right there um, there was a boat parked there when the lidar scan was taken um, but it wasn't there when the photograph was taken so it's watercolored also very funny looking um, just for comparison these two ships here uh, they were not moved at all between those two scans and that's just because they're permanently moored uh, I think those are restaurants, maybe hotels, I uh, must admit, I'm not actually quite sure. So those are the problems specifically with aerial data uh, and with mapping orthophotos onto that, um, that you get these potential mismatches. But as I said, for many applications, it's not really that important. This here is Koi Tower. So what is important uh, is that you have the ability of freely roaming through massive data sets. Um, and this data set here, uh, as I mentioned, is about 42 gigabytes. Uh, this here is Alcatraz. Um, and my computer has only 8 gigabytes of main memory. So the data set doesn't nearly fit into there. But it doesn't really matter. We can still go wherever we want. Uh, we can zoom in. We can look at every individual point if we want to. Uh, we can make measurements at very high detail. We can extract features. Uh, we can fit planes. We can measure strike and dip angles. And all of that uh, over very, very large uh, survey areas. Most other LiDAR visualization packages are limited to working with single tiles at a time. This is the big antenna. Uh, there's Twin Peaks right here. It's also a very nice place, not a TV show, but the mountains. One, two, Twin Peaks. Um, there's a nice observation deck right here. You get a great look uh, of downtown. Uh, there it is. Um, so these tiles that you're working with in other software, they might be uh, 100 by 100 meter. They might be one square kilometer. But that is really limiting. In many cases, uh, you want to look at the big picture. You want to see an entire fault line. You want to see an entire mountain range all at once, and then still have the ability of, hey, look, uh, it's Candlestick Park. Uh, it's the home of the San Francisco 49ers, heroes of the Super Bowl. That's what it looks like. Um, you want to be able to seamlessly switch between, uh, between close-up views uh, and then really going down to street level. So here, for example, we have Mission Dolores, I think. Is that Mission Dolores? Um, yep, there's a mission church right there. Uh, and we can do that here. Uh, you can go all the way in. Uh, if you feel so inclined, you can go all the way down to one-to-one. -to -one. Um, that's what the scale bar is for, let me see. Now, while you can do that, you can put yourself onto the street, uh, and it's almost like almost like being there. You can walk down the street here. But the thing is that these data, and I have to admit that, they don't really, the resolution is not high enough to really lend itself to one to one work because we only have about 10 points per square meter. So here we want to work at a scale of 1 to 10, probably 1 to 100, uh, maybe even 1 to 1000 to get a bit more of an overview, and then it really uh, starts looking like something. And of course, if you want to go all the way out, uh, you can always do that uh, in order to zoom around, uh, zoom around more quickly. Here we are back in uh, back in South of Market, and oh look, here's the ashtray, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. This is really to see the architecture here. You really want to have some side scans to fill in the walls. It's a very interesting looking building. Um, and oh look, talking about sports, there's the San Francisco Giant Stadium, baseball stadium, and here is a very appropriate giant cola bottle. Uh, looks very nicely resolved. You can really see the shape. Uh, in the scan, even though it's scanned from quite uh, quite a high altitude. So that ability of changing scales and working over a very large uh, field site without having to without having to uh, switch between tiles or having to work with them one at a time uh, makes a huge impact on many scientific applications. And we have gotten many results of scientific work just from that ability. Oh, by the way, this here is uh, Haight Street going this way. Um, that is Ashbury Street going here. So here we have the intersection of Hayden Ashbury. You can smell the patchouli almost from up here. That's what it looks like, more or less. Um, and so that capability of LiDAR view, this out-of-core multi-resolution rendering, uh, working with very, very large point sets. This is Golden Gate Park, by the way. That's the Conservatory of Flowers here. Um, that's the California Academy of Sciences. Um, that is really That's really a big deal. Uh, it enables many applications, enables virtual field work, enables really getting very detailed measurements from very large sites. Uh, we did this uh, with a very large aerial scan of the big 2010 Mexicali earthquake. Uh, we did that with other things as well. And so that's the main capability of LiDAR Viewer, that it enables working with these data in a way that is, I would say, new, 
uh, and that uh, is very useful for a large number of scientific applications. So that's pretty much the story. Let's meet the LIDAR viewer. So I'll see you next time.